Okay. Hey, everybody, can you hear me? Okay, everyone, feel free to unmute yourself and we can continue. We can get started soon. Oh, yeah, that's fine. You can go ahead and keep yourself uh, muted if that's the case. Sure. Okay. We ready to go? It's about 1.30. Yeah, sound good? Okay. Um, okay, first of all, are there any questions about anything about course structure? Um, is any kind of the material, anything? Please let me know. Let's get all this cleared up before we actually start um, reviewing for the quiz. All right, so go ahead and let me know any of your concerns, questions, anything like that. And also you can go ahead and unmute if you feel like it and just ask questions. That's totally cool. Oh, it's 131. All right, so we are definitely in session. Okay, so how are we doing so far with class? We doing okay? Your videos are really helpful. Are they? Thank you so yeah. much. Um, yeah. I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if everyone is watching them though. So, I'm glad to hear that. I think that, um, no, it's actually, it's, I think it's pretty necessary for you guys to watch the videos because yeah. um, it, it's like the same thing. It's, I think of them as equivalent as coming to class. Okay. So they're all right there and you're probably going to get um, information in those videos that you would not normally get from the PowerPoints or just reading the book. Okay. So there may actually be information in the videos that you will need for the quizzes. So make sure you guys definitely watch those. And I'm glad that they're helpful. Um, and that's why I made the video. So we don't necessarily have to do a meeting like this every time we're supposed to have a class. This way you guys can 
you guys can study and go through the videos and everything like that on your own time. You can, this is part of the fun of having an online class. So, I mean, I know things suck right now, but I mean, here's a benefit. You get your time. So, you know. Um, are there any concerns that anyone's having? I don't does that everyone um, knows that you go to my website to, re to access videos and things like that, right? Yes. Okay. Um, well, if we don't have any questions or concerns, do you guys wanna go ahead and get started with the review? Yes. You ready to do that? All right, so how this is gonna work, because um, normally we would be doing a Kahoot in class and you're all gonna get into Teams and you would work that way. I mean, many of you who have had me in other classes before kind of know the drill. Well, we're going to do a little bit differently this time. So I'm going to share my screen with you. And it's going to be the Kahoot screen. So that's what you guys are going to see. And that's what you guys are connect to. Now, of course, we're not. No. Sorry. I think someone's still waiting. Some people might be waiting to get in because one of my group mates is saying he's waiting to be let in. Really? Um. Okay, I just let one person in. I'm seeing one person that's showing that they're joining, but this okay. person's been joining for a long time now, so I don't know oh. if... Okay, I'll just let him know that you've let everybody in. Yeah, I'm not sure about that person. Um, shoot. Maybe... There he is. That's him right there. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, perfect. I was going to say maybe they could just sign out and sign back in or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, it's okay. fine. Okay, cool. So everyone's in? We're good? Talk to your friends. Is anyone left out? Okay, um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to share my screen with you. You guys are going to, that's how we're going to connect and see the questions and all that. And what I want you guys to do is you're not going to get into groups, of course, we can't do that. But so we're going to play against each other as individuals. Okay. And I think that for, since I don't think you guys necessarily want to use your name, your actual names. Okay. But of course I need to have some way to identify you to give you guys credit and your extra credit for the winners and whatnot. So what I think that you guys should do is just use your ID numbers. Okay, no one else should know your ID number but you and me, right? So that being said, I think you guys should use your ID numbers as your nickname when you're signing into the Kahoot and then we could play it like that. Um, does anyone have any problems with using their ID numbers? No, you guys are good? We're good with ID numbers? All right, let's do that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, set this up and if we don't have any more questions or any kind of concerns at all about this course, then let's just start, um, Let's start the whole thing, okay? Um. Ooh, that is loud. Okay. So let me make the screen bigger. Okay, so there you guys go. You can go ahead and start to sign in. That's the game pen. For those of you who haven't played this before, you go to this website up here, www.kahoot.it, and then use this game pen so that you can connect to this particular game. And then where it says um, what nickname you want to use, that is where you're going to put your ID number. And then that's all you have to do. So you don't need to create an account or anything like that. Very easy, right?
Also, I want to let everyone know that this is being recorded, just in case you didn't know. So whatever we're doing here, you're going to be able to have access to this video for later if you need to refer back to it, like when you're um, taking your quiz or when you're studying for your quiz. Obviously, not, you're, gonna, you're not going to have it while you're taking your quiz because you don't like to cheat, right? Actually, you can do whatever you want on the online class. So you're good to go if you want to cheat. I know you will. And I'm fine with it. All right, so I'm waiting for the last several people to go ahead and sign in. The code song. You guys know. You guys know the song. Do 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 I hope I don't get in trouble for copyright, but you know. Okay. Is everyone in? Because I haven't seen this number go up yet. I believe we have more participants. So um I'm just gonna I'm gonna play this and about I'm gonna actually just gonna go ahead and play. I think we're good. And you can always access it again if you fall out because remember this is the website that you go to and the game pin number will um, be displayed at the bottom I believe so you can easily connect reconnect back whenever so we're going to start okay you guys ready <laughs> Good job, everybody. Okay, so what is primary prevention? Basically, do, well, what I want to say is don't get this mixed up with primary care. Okay, primary care is pretty much, um, really, primary care is secondary prevention, if you want to put it that way. Secondary prevention is just like a small part of what you get in primary care. However, um, Primary prevention is the very beginning. It's like the forefront of just completely not 
doing whatever you have to do to not get a disease. Like, don't even go there. Don't even, like the thought hasn't even come into your mind. You have no disease whatsoever. What do you do to prevent any kind of disease even happening? Washing hands, um, eating healthy, taking your vitamins, um, being positive, things like that, right? So this is the reduction of the probability that a disease will even develop in the future. Okay, so you're re taking steps to reduce that from even happening. That's primary prevention. Now, secondary prevention would be the early detection and treatment of the disease. So that's the next step. Let's say you have symptoms or anything like that. And hold on. so you have symptoms maybe or anything like that. Um, that. At that point, that's where you go in and get diagnostic testing to see if you even have it. Or maybe you actually or detected it early on that you have something and now you're getting treatment to prevent any further progression of this disease that would be secondary prevention so the red would be a secondary prevention the brown is the actual answer for this does that make sense guys no okay all right let's move on go you wherever you are Good job, everybody. Good job, good job, good job, everybody. Um, what are the other actual, what are the other requirements that allow you to be eligible for Medicare? Do you guys remember? Anybody? Okay, so the other one. If you ones, have a disability, like a, I think a mental health disability would qualify you for Medicare. Yeah, a mental health disability or a physical disability. Physical. Um, so yeah, if you have a disability, that would qualify for you for Medicare. And then also, so would having end-stage renal disease. Okay, so when you're at like the, the end of um, kidney disease and you're going into dialysis, that is also going to qualify you for Medicare. Okay. I'm wrong and you guys are right just so you know okay so yeah it's definitely market justice I apologize for that I put the wrong answer in that's my bad but good job everybody Thank you. 
pest houses were the quarantine. Um, did you guys, uh, okay. Also, I wanna point out that they did not provide any kind of treatment. We know that, right? In these, court, in these, in these pest houses, they were really just um, providing with room and board and whatnot. And just to kind of give you a, you know, shelter really and food and whatnot to help take care of you while you have this contagious disease. There were no treatments for these diseases. So there are no treatments being given for the patients that were put in these pest houses. Can you imagine if we um, still use pest houses today? We would all be in a pest house. Or certain people would be in a pest house right now. Pretty scary. Um, okay, so the countries that we are going to focus on who have certain who are part of the social health system and then also remember we have countries that we look at or that we talk about I guess I'll mention whenever we talk about a national health system as well. Okay, so the United States definitely does not have a social health system, nor do we have a national health system. I just want to let you guys know that right now. We don't even really have a system. Okay, um, Germany is going to be Germany and also Japan. And I think those are the only two that I have mentioned in our um, videos and PowerPoints that have a social health system. Okay. The answer got cut off, so I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, I would have taken the brown one as well because it looks like it's exactly the same thing, clearly. Um, the actual answer got cut off, but yeah, this is the number of new cases that are coming out um, of a specific disease um, during a specific period of time, right, divided by the population at risk. Okay, everyone, the population that's at risk. Okay, that's who we're looking at when we think incidents. That's shelter right there. Food and shelter. majority got it yes the almshouses are that's we could almost just call them that just call them homeless shelters from back in the day because that's really what they were they were there to house the destitutes of society who were the the elderly the orphans the disabled the people who really could not take care of themselves and had no one to help take care of them okay
Um, so demand side rationing, do we remember what that is? Okay, demand side rationing, that is when pretty much we can um, think of that as, or another term for that would be price rationing. Okay, and demand side rationing would result from competition. Okay, this is when there's so much competition and um, supply and demand starts to normalize itself or the prices start to really normalize themselves um, in the market, in that industry. So for example, like um, if we had a market justice system, okay, that would mean that it's a completely free market. There's no, um, there's nothing really, there's no restrictions being put on here. It's not, there isn't, it's not going to be highly regulated like how our system actually is. So what we would see is that um, it's going to actually be regulated by natural laws of supply and demand in the situation. And then you would see like real, like raw competition. Um, physicians would be competing against physicians and hospitals against hospitals and um, they would have to normalize, they would have to reduce prices, hence demand side rationing or price rationing. So they would have to reduce their prices in order to get business of the patients, okay? To get businesses from the consumer um, so that they, you know, can sell their treatments and their services and things like that, okay? So in a market justice system, demand side rationing would happen eventually as the price, um, that would cause the prices to start to like normalize and um, that way healthcare in this situation would actually start to become more like affordable. It'll be kind of like, like how car transportation is, right? Um, having a car is very normal for us, right? It's pretty normal. Or at least you have a way to get around. If you don't have that, you may ride the bus everywhere. You might Uber, you can take trains and planes and there are a variety of different ways that we can get around, right? However, transportation is all your, um, that's your responsibility, okay? Um, so in a market justice situation, healthcare would be all your responsibility. And so, so that way you would see like there would be different ways that you can pay. We would find there's a lot of competition. It's not going to be as expensive as healthcare actually is now because providers would actually be really marketing hard to get your business. There would be a lot of deals. There would be a lot of um, price reduction and um, normal, like affordable level prices. Okay. You would probably have your top tier high end level healthcare. And then you have your like mm, fairly down here kind of healthcare. And then, you know, somewhere in the middle, like your designer and your generic, and then your, mm, your Michael Core level healthcare. Okay. Right. So it would be like that. And that would be price rationing and or demand side rationing. Right. Do, does that, does that, Kind of makes sense to you guys a little bit. All right, let's move on. I probably hint. I probably should not have put the in front. The doesn't belong there in the beginning of the sentence. Just so you guys know. Pretend this is gone and that might help you figure out your answer. Thank you. 
Good job, everybody. I knew you could do it. Very good. Yes, Medicaid that is the answer. Good job, everybody. Yes. Um, okay, so a multiple payer system is more cumbersome than a single payer system for all the following reasons, except um, everyone gets universal access to healthcare we need. We definitely don't have that. We have a multiple payer system, and that is definitely the opposite of a multiple payer system because a single payer system is pretty much universal access for everybody. Uh, okay, so moving on. Very 
Thank you, John. So, okay. So, a national health insurance system has, of course, is going to have a central governing agency, right? We all know this. Um, who is that central governing agency? Is it an insurance agency? Is it? Is it really? You guys, no, it's not an insurance agency. It's the government. In a national health insurance system, the government is normally what is going to be the central governing agency. It's not going to be an insurance agency or any other kind of agency other than the government because in a national health insurance system, um, everything is completely controlled by the government. Even the, the physicians and the hospitals are owned by the government. The government pays the physicians on salary. The nurses are government employees. You know, it's, it's all government because the government controls everything and they're able to pay this through the taxes. Okay. So in a national health insurance system, do not get that confused. It's not an insurance agency that controls everything. It's going to be the government. Okay, so that's what England and Canada have and all that. You guys, this is almost the same question. Okay, so in a single peer system, which is what a national health insurance system and also a um, social health insurance system. So in these different types of systems, uh, a single payer system, the primary payer is not an insurance company, okay? The primary payer is usually the government. Right, so it's usually going to be paid by the taxes or it's going to be paid um, still through a government mandated program as with a social health system. So the social health system have a different type of way that they collect money. It's not called taxes, but they still mandate like employers and whatnot to contribute to the payments for this health system. Okay, so in a single payer system, it's just one payer that pays the health care for, you know, everybody. And it's usually always the government or it's some government mandated created program. Okay, so it, no, it would not be an insurance agency, a private insurance agency paying for everybody. No, it's not going to happen. Um, so that's why that would be false. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Thank you guys. Good job. What is Medicaid? Think about that. Is that, is Medicaid insurance? Is it government provided insurance? Is it a government insurance program? Right? So if Medicaid is your insurance and you're insured through Medicaid, then that would make you insured, right? So yeah. you have insurance, you're insured. Um, so you would not be medically un uninsured, you would be medically insured, of course. Um, okay, so that's why that would be false. Okay, let's move forward. Good job, everybody. Yes. Barbers were usually surgeons in the pre industrial area. Good job. Very good. Good one. All right, whoever this is. Good job. Four correct answers in a row. So impressed. Um, okay. Highest answer streak. Wow. Professor. Yeah. 
I'm not understanding. Uh, I thought they all, I thought Germany, Japan, and the UK had it. Sorry, uh, okay, after this, then hold on. Thank you. Yeah, prevalence is going to be the total number of cases divided by the specific population that you're talking about. So it could be anything. It could be specifically you want to look at San Bernardino only, or specifically you want to look at some disease prevalence going on in, at CSUSB, and you would just look at the total number of cases that are showing up in a certain amount of time divided by just that specific population that you're looking at. Um, okay, so. What was the question? Actually, you was. I guess it was I'm like. Sorry, go ahead. I think I'm confusing universal healthcare and national, and then thinking that all Germany, UK, and Japan have it all. Okay, so pretty much both of them kind of have. Um, okay, so there are two different type or systems, right? That we're looking at. Um, there's the national health insurance system. I wish I could just write with this. Um, I wonder if it'll, it's not going to let me write. Okay. Um, so anyway, there is the national health insurance system and then there's a social health insurance system. There are, in some ways, they are kind of very similar because in one way that makes them very similar is that they're both single payer systems and they're both provide universal health care. You know, really when they say universal health care, I guess um, that refers to that refers to the level of access that the country provides their citizens. So in our country, we have partial access, but in these other countries, they, they have the national and the social health systems. They have, um, they have universal access. And that doesn't mean that everyone gets all the care that they want in the world, but it does mean that every that they are covered, um, especially their primary care and you know all the ne just necessary services that are affordable, that are within the budget, that are you know provided for everyone. Those are covered for all the citizens. Okay, so that's what national that's what universal um, access means, and both types of systems have it. Okay, social and national. Okay, so they both have that. They're both um, single payers and they both got their universal access. Um, where they differ is um, really like the way that the systems kind of, um, they differ how they're, um, they collect money. They differ in also how the government, you know, manages them. Okay, so in a social health system, the government will, uh, the government allows, the, well, the government doesn't hire physicians, okay? The government doesn't, all the nurses, the physicians, the healthcare workers, they're not necessarily government employees. They can be, but they're not really government employees. And you can own your own facility. You can own your own hospital and whatnot in the social healthcare systems. Um, yes, there is going to be regulation, governmental regulation among all that. However, it's not like how it is over here. Okay. okay. Over there, it's fully government regulated, although they, it's still technically part of the private, private sector. Okay. So they're allowed to, these are allowed to be private businesses and whatnot. And they, the social healthcare system will collect the money to pay for, you know, everyone's healthcare in a different way. It's not necessarily taxes. It'll be, um, so they collect money and put it in like this, basically this health insurance pool for the whole country. And they do that by collecting money from like the employers, okay? The employers, whether they're private or public sector, they're gonna collect money from the employers who are, and that money is gonna go into this health insurance pool, pretty much, if you will, like for all the citizens to pay for everyone's health care. Okay, now in the national health insurance system, this is where uh, we have 
um, the government exercises full control. They are, the government oversees all operations of the healthcare system. And so all of the like physicians and healthcare professionals, the nurses, everyone, those are all government workers. They're government employees. They're gonna get paid on the government salary. The hospitals are government hospitals, the facilities and everything. Like, this is all government stuff, okay? Um, and the government pays for all of the health services for the citizens through taxes. Okay. Okay. So that's really the difference. Pre basically though, they're both going to be for the universal access and they're both single payer. Single payers. Okay. Okay. So you know, so yeah, the different in the different countries that do them, um, for the social, that's going to be Japan and Germany that, you know, I usually, I like, to, if I'm going to talk about them, I'm going to use those countries as an example. And same, like with, um, a national health insurance system, if I'm going to use any country as an example, if we're going to refer back to a national health insurance system, we're going to talk about the UK and Canada. Okay. okay. So there you go. I hope that clears everything up. Yes. Thank you. Um, all right. You're welcome. Okay. So let's move forward. I'm not able to uh, oh. select one. Did it freeze? Yeah. And I don't um, think my screen is letting me click on the laptop here. Um, if you just get refresh, back in, it'll it'll let you. What happened? If you click refresh, it'll let you. Oh, okay, okay. I was scared. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, good. And you're not going to lose your spot when you do that, will you? Or does anyone no. know? You're not? No. Okay, cool. Okay, great. Okay, so dispensaries back then were, um, these were like outpatient clinics in the urban areas. And this was so that people who like couldn't afford health care so they could go here and receive some level of free care. And it was given or the care was provided for by those new physicians or those ones who were in training. Okay. Remember in the pre-industrial era, there was a time where they actually started medical school. Okay. So it wasn't anything like medical school school it is today. And if you need to know more about this, you can go back to the video and um, rewatch it. But um, so back then, these they allowed the um, the new physicians or the physicians in training to get experience through these dispensaries, and then that way they were able to provide free care for um, people who couldn't afford it in the urban areas. Okay.
Very good. Um, no, yeah, we are not controlled by any agency for that matter. Okay. Um, so under the medical model, the model that we use in the United States, that model actually focuses on just your physical symptoms. Okay, we don't really, this doesn't, it doesn't care about what's going on in here. It doesn't care about your well-being. It doesn't care about what, um, you know, what is the source or the cause of any kind of illness. It really focuses mostly on the, the physical symptoms. And in order to heal you, all we have to do is alleviate your symptoms. And then you are considered fine. Okay, so that's really how the medical model, or another term for this would be the biomedical model. Okay. Good job. Good job. Go, Stephanie. Two more questions. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Good job. Last question, everybody. Good job, everyone. So these are your five. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and have one question regarding the U.S. healthcare not being controlled by a governing agency. Wouldn't mm -hmm. you consider like CMS or DMHC as being a controlling body of the government over healthcare? Because I know we have a lot of rules we have to comply with and if we're not in compliance with those rules then we get um, yeah like we get you know penalized for for it. Right. So those, um, well, when we start learning more about health policy, those are going to come into like regulation policies and okay. the government will come up with certain programs or like agencies that will um, like force, enforce these policies. That being said, we are not, we don't have, um, the government doesn't serve as like a central governing agency where they right. oversee okay. everything and create standards and where we, um, everyone has to just abide by a certain standard. Uh, we don't really have that. We have some regulation, um, and then we have some allocation, and those are okay. really the only types of policies. So the regulation are like what you just uh, mentioned right there. Also, Medicare has Medicare and Medicaid are would also be considered. Um, well, there are some regulation policies within the Medicare Medicaid program, but a lot of what Medicare Medicaid is would be for the allocation type of policies that we have. So I, those are just okay, that makes some sense. policies. Yeah, some policies that we have. It's not that um, the government has no control, but the government pretty much has just as much control over our um, our whole healthcare system as like an insurance agency. We don't have, the government doesn't have full control. No, yeah, they don't. Right. So it's okay. not like, it's not like headquarters for healthcare in America or yeah. anything like that. We don't have anything like that, unfortunately. Um, so I hope that clears it up a bit. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this. And does anyone have any more questions that we want to clear up before we close out? Anything? Anything at all? Um, this is a safe place. I have a quick question. Are the yes. who questions or whatever we got right, um, we get those points or are they used against us or how does it work? Or it's just practice? Is that for the Kahoot that we just now did? Yeah. For the okay, so yeah, this is really just to benefit you guys. This is a review session for you guys. Um, at the same time, this also was an extra credit opportunity as well. So you guys were basically playing to earn extra credit. And also you're playing so that you can, um, you're working with the material. So this is just another way for you to learn everything. Okay, um, that's you. really what this exercise was about. 
Um, yeah, so you're not going to be docked any points or anything like that. If you came, great. You benefited so much. And also I'm going to, this whole thing was recorded, so hopefully I don't ruin anything. And I will be able to take this video and, you know, convert it and allow you guys to all have access to what happened here so that you can refer back to it if you need to. Okay. Um, anything else? Do we are do we we already know that the quiz okay the quiz is going to be 20 questions true false multiple choice every question is worth three points so you're going to get a total of 60 points um for the whole quiz um you get one hour to finish it you probably won't necessarily use the whole hour but you have a whole hour uh make sure that if you on um, once you start it you only get to take it in one sitting. Once you start it, you have to finish it. You can't pause it and um, you know use it later or pick it up later or anything like that. Um, and you get five days from now. So the 20th is when it's actually gonna close. So make sure you guys take it by the 20th. That gives you plenty of time to go ahead and review anything that you need to and also review this if you need to. Um, anything else? I mean, okay, yeah, if we're good, we're good. Um, so I'll go ahead and end this meeting. It was, it's been great. I hope you guys learned a lot or I hope you guys are well prepared for the quiz and good luck with that and have a great rest of your day. Bye Thank guys. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.